Hey everyone, it's Brian. In this video, I wanted to review this book, An Introduction to Analysis by James R. Kirkwood. I've got the second edition here, a hard cover. And this is not to be confused with complex analysis. This is a book about real analysis, the study of the real numbers. And it's from a proof, rigorous, theoretic approach. So this should not be the first math book that maybe you want to pick up. Um, but if you have some experience with math and mathematical thinking, uh, you can dive right into this. And this is actually the book that I use or have used in my graduate real analysis courses. And I think it's totally, totally su suitable, maybe even more suitable for an undergraduate analysis course, or even just anyone who wants to learn real analysis for the first time. So let's take a look at this. You can see the contents here. We start with chapter one, the real number system. That's what we're studying, the real numbers. And I think this book does a good job at introducing the real numbers and kind of the basic idea of them and what they really, really mean. Um, sort of a lot of times the real numbers are taken for granted, but what do we really mean theoretically when we're talking about the real numbers? Chapter two talks about sequences of real numbers. And this might be a little bit odd if this is the first time you're taking analysis. Um, if you've taken Calc 2, you know you don't get to sequences until about halfway through. So why is chapter 2 starting at sequences? Well, sequences are foundational for many later ideas. And the proof ideas that you use with sequences carry on throughout many things in the book. Chapter three actually talks about topology. Now, the first time I took analysis as an undergraduate, we didn't talk about topology until the second semester. So this might not be the same pace or the same ordering as some other analysis courses, but this section on topology, it's really not too bad. You can see it's very small here and you can digest the ideas pretty quickly and it'll help us a lot later on through some ideas uh, in the later chapters, but don't be afraid that this is getting into topology on the third chapter. Um, it's really not too much of a stretch to learn. Chapter four talks about continuous functions. Obviously, continuous functions are a huge part of analysis, part of calculus. There's lots of things we can do with continuous functions. Uh, like for one, what can you do with a lot of continuous functions? You can take their derivative. So chapter five talks about differentiation. Uh, obviously a big part of calculus and what we're doing. Um, the mean value theorem is in here, a nice proof of the mean value theorem. And you learn just how important the mean value theorem is to calculus uh, in this book, how many things it's used for. Uh, chapter six talks about integration, the Riemann integral. It's probably not exactly what you expect. Maybe the definition is a lot different than what you learn from calculus, but uh, nonetheless, there it is. Chapter 7 talks about series. Again, if you've taken Calc 2, you're familiar with the idea of series of real numbers. Chapter 8 talks about sequences and series of functions, things like Taylor series, uh, which you're also probably familiar, from, familiar with from Calc 2. Chapter 9 talks about Fourier series. So um, not every analysis class would probably talk about Fourier series, but uh, they have a lot of nice applications, so it might be worth looking into. Uh, some things that this book does not have that you might go over in your analysis class or maybe a second semester of analysis. Uh, we're not talking about any metric spaces here or any measure theory. So those topics, if you're looking for a more complete list of things of analysis, um, maybe you need a little bit of a more rigorous book. But this book is, after all, this is a, an introduction to analysis, and this is the one that I recommend people read first. Maybe you read something a little bit more challenging and involved later. As far as how the book is set up, um, you can see the pages are in black and white. And at times, this book will feel a little dense. Uh, it is a proof, proof course, after all, but it is something you can teach yourself. I think it goes slow enough and it breaks it down enough that you can really teach yourself. Again, this is an introductory book, which is a good thing. Uh, you can see it starts off with set theory, as many proof theoretic books will do, and introduces the notation that this book is gonna use. That's good. This does a lot of what I like math books do, and many of them do now, is it 
bolds or highlights definitions or examples or theorems or proofs so you can really like jump right to the important things. Sometimes you'll even come across a few pictures or illustrations when they want to illustrate the idea they want to get across. And like many math textbooks, you'll have exercises in the back, maybe anywhere from 15 to 30 per section. So you've got plenty of exercises, probably more than you would want to do. Um, the one thing, and like many other uh, higher level math books, the answers are not in the back. Uh, you're not going to find solutions to the answers anywhere in this book. But uh, in today's age of technology, you know, Google, YouTube, uh, the internet, you can probably find the answer to almost any question uh, that you get stuck on worked out. Someone, someone out there has probably done it for you. So that's always nice. Uh, other than that, I found a re I really like this book. This is uh, my favorite analysis book as of right now. It's you can really teach yourself, and that's that's what I like about it. And I spend most of my time with this teaching myself rather than just learning from the lecture. Uh, so if you're interested in this book, I'll put a link to the description. You can check it out for yourself. Um, but if you're looking for a place to start with real analysis, this is where I would go. So thanks very much for watching, and I hope you have a great day.